Words. Yeah. Let's talk about words because mm -hmm. you use them with such power and precision and perceptiveness. How did you how did you come into that journey of finding the way those words work? Uh, I guess uh, from a young age, I also wrote. I mean, I wrote, you know, plays when I was a kid. And I was, a, I went to, and for a while, I didn't act in plays in junior high school. I wrote a play, and I was a public speaker. I did public speaking. Um, I don't know why. Um, but I was, I thought, oh, this might be interesting. Uh, and it was a great, it's actually a great help when you have to do direct address to an audience when, or when you're doing a one person show because I've done about four or five of them now and they were all very different in their address to an audience. Very different. Some are direct, talking to individuals. Some are talking to the room. Some are talking to a character who's dead, but the room is included. So it's very different. Um, and it was also um, uh, erasing fear of the auditors, the people who are watching, the audience, not being afraid of them, wanting to reveal to them, not show them, but allow yourself to have the courage to reveal something to them, to share something with them. Um, and words, oh, it's so great when you were working with a fabulous playwright, because when you get the words wrong and you're given line notes, going, you go, oh, that's so much better. <laughs> My, my improvised line was nowhere near that. And that's, a, I think, a respect for the playwright. And I'm one of those, you know, old school gals who is there to serve the playwright, or what I think the playwright is after. Uh, I, uh, I'm not an auteur. I'm not, uh, you know, putting my concept on this character or whatever. I want to say, what's this playwright trying to say? And how can I help it be said? And so I pay attention to those words. I pay attention to the punctuation. And if you're doing Mamet or Tennessee Williams, <coughs> better. Because there's a reason why Tennessee Williams writes a long, long line without a stop. There's a reason why Shakespeare, and I work with the first folio for punctuation, mostly because they're not broken down into small little sound bites. There are long thoughts. You know, uh, Juliet's post speech about uh, how if when I wake, she has 19 verse lines that is one sentence, which is the, there's, there's, there's commas, which is the discombobulation of her thinking, but the imagination is so spurred that she can't stop. How would you describe a sentence then in terms of an actress tools? That, that Juliet, that 19 lines of Juliet is one sentence. How do you, how does that? Well, we all speak <coughs> sometimes in long sentences with pauses and changes. They're not always articulate. We don't always know where they're going, but we know that there's some nebulous reason why we continue to speak, like I'm doing right now. And I'm keeping you kind of arrested because I'm saying I'm not finished yet, and when I'm finished, I'll let you know. Full stop. Your brain can rest. <laughs> you can think, oh, great. That was one kind of serving. Now let's move on to the next. Why does Shakespeare then talk to the actors saying this is the long span of Juliet's wishing to make this point and takes her 19 lines to get there? Why does he put that in his text? But he writes because also because if you break up Shakespeare too much you can't follow the sense. If you go gallop pace, you fiery footed steeds towards Phoebus lodging. You don't get it. If you go gallop a pace, you fiery footed steeds towards Phoebus lodging. And then I'm going to continue. Such a wagoner as Phaethon would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. You know, but you need that. I mean, it's about need. You're, I also, need talking to you're also talking about long form speaking. Long form speaking. And we are and in an age of. And complicated thinking. And, 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 and the long goal. And yes, we've gotten to the point where, you know, you're in an interview, you want to get the, the juicy sound bite that's going to sell the show. Or you want to have, uh, you know, something that's going to fit in that 20 second clip. Or um, the pithy, short, smart saying. Because people will change the channel. Or it's, uh, you know, you see it all the time in talk shows, right? You got to get your joke in, you know, you got you know, to get it in there. And uh, so, to, but I think there's a thirst and a hunger for uh, long discourse. TED Talks are an example. We're, you know, there are, we have gotten back to a certain extent to the days of lectures when people want to hear people articulate their thoughts 
in an essay form, but to an audience verbally. I think that's why TED Talks are so successful. Do you think it's been a change in the audiences? I mean, the, when we were young actors, the audiences actually came out of a, uh, you know, a more a verbal tradition, and they were yes, here. Yes. And then here we go in the '70s and '80s, and here comes texting and all the rest of it. And oh. it's a shrinkage of how you communicate. And is that reflected in what you hear, the responses of an audience? Uh, I don't. I think audiences are pretty honest. I mean, you know, if we talk about their attention span, I think if it's, it's, if it's delivered to them, if it's acted well, I think they'll get it. And I don't think they'll get bored. I mean, I have this, you know, I teach. I have this, th I have this theory about that our job as an actor is not to let the audience become Shakespeare's cat. <laughs> you know, when, you know those cartoons where you go, now, Felix, don't, you know, eat so much food. And all they hear is blah, 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 right? So you're watching a Shakespeare play or a, a 17th, 16th century play, and you're following it, and you're knowing what's happening, and then all of a sudden, oh, blah, 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 and you don't understand what's going on. You didn't quite get it. You go blah, blah, and you're, you're, you're hearing another language. And then you get back into it. And to me, that's because something is not detailed or specific enough in the performances. So you're saying don't break up the line, I'll gallop a pace, you fiery footed steeds. But you're also, you're saying put it together, but you're also saying the detail, phrase to phrase, yes. to comment to You have comment. to pull it apart. You have to pull everything apart. Why gallop? First of all, it's not galop, because the dot, the dot, the dot, the dot, the iambic, it's gallop. It's like a whip crap you know, a whip crack. It's like a, a crack of a whip to say, giddy up. So the first word, and, and the plosive is g, g, and it's gallop with a P. So it's gallop, and another P, a pace. Gallop, a pace. Well, if you don't have the facility to find those P's and make them do what you want them to, you're gonna go gallop a pace, gallop a pace, or whatever. And it means gallop really fast. And now we're going to describe them. Let's take out, what I do is I also take out that word. Let's say, if you feel your sentence is too long, there are too many words, there are. There are too many words for you. Because you haven't found out why you need each one. So if you say, let's take out you fiery footed steeds. Let's say, gallop a pace towards Phoebus lodging. So you go, gallop a pace towards Phoebus lodging. That's where I want you to go. Now, you think, I have to get personal to you. I have to address you. Like if I want to say, gallop a pace, Robert. But instead, I'm going to say, gallop a pace. Now, let's say I don't say fiery footed. Let's say I say, gallop a pace, you steeds. Horses towards Phoebus lodging. Now, I want to describe them. I could say, you fast, but no. They're the, they're the steeds of the sun. So I'm going to say, gallop a pace, you fiery footed steeds. Because you're Apollo's steeds. You're the horse horses with the sun. So you find out why you want each one and if why it's better that you have that word. When you, and then when you take it away, you miss it. And when you find out why you miss that word, then you need it. And then I'll listen. 